So do I don't know what to do. You can act like a man. What's the matter with you? Is this how you turn out a Hollywood Pinocchio that uh, cries like a woman? <laughs> what can I do? What can I do? What is that nonsense? Look at this. You spend time with your family? Sure I do. Good. Because a man who doesn't spend time with his family can never be a real man. Mm. You look terrible. I want you to eat. I want you to rest well, and a month from now, this Hollywood big shot's gonna give you what you want. It's too late. They start shooting in a week. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Warning. All displays of negativity will be deliciously repackaged and properly returned to sender. Only good vibes allowed beyond this point. Now, if you're ready, come on in. What's going on, Champagne Gang? Fizz fam, confidant. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Sip, Savor, and Spill. So get ready to sip the drama, savor the excitement, and spill the secrets on all things celebrity, reality TV, and social media. Over here, we don't just gossip. But we learn life lessons from their mishaps. So grab your glass, pop some bubbles, and let's get scandalous. <laughs> so if you have your glasses and they're filled to the rim, raise them high for a quick boost of encouragement. You know you need it. Every book has pages. And if you continue to turn the pages, you'll eventually get to the end of the book. But if you stop turning pages and put the book down, it's not that the book no longer has a story to tell. It's that you stop turning the pages to get to the end of the story. Uh -huh. Everything you do is writing the book of your life. And if you refuse to keep turning pages, if you just stop in the middle, if you get distracted from moving forward, it's not that your story doesn't have an ending. You're just stuck in the middle of unfolding chapters. No matter how hard it gets, keep turning the pages. Keep forging your future so you can keep seeing your story unfold. So here's to you, confidant, for you are worth it. So for today's bit of clink and chaos, we have Jaguar Wright. Did y'all see this story? Well, if you didn't, don't worry about it. That's what I'm here for. Now, I don't know a lot about Jag, as she's also known as outside of. She's been singing like a canary, exposing everything in the industry, especially Diddy and without fear. What I also know about her is she's been untouched while she's been doing it. Now, for me, one thing that you'll learn is I don't religiously follow these celebrities. I don't because I really don't care that much about them. I couldn't tell you a birthday. For half of them, I couldn't tell you their real name because I'm not that invested in their stories. However, things that they do come up and it begs for discussion. So if you think this is a channel that eats, sleeps, and drinks following up on celebrities, I'm sorry, it's not. I don't because my forte isn't drama, it's empowerment. So we take their drama and pull from it life lessons. So if God allows us to make it to their level, we don't make their same mistake. Because experience, as we may think, isn't always the best teacher. Learning from the experiences of others is. So I don't know much about Jag, but when I saw this video, it taught me a lot. Check this out. Um, for those who are just may not know you or those who may know you, can you reintroduce yourself? Let them know where you're from. My name is Angelo and I am Jaguar Rice Manager, friend, charge of security. I grew up with Jag in Philly, living most of my life on the Italian market. And the job is to keep Jaguar alive as long as possible, by any means possible, because the people that want to take her down happen to have a lot of power. And that's pretty sad. So in other words, you're Jaguar Rice muscle, if need be. I'm um, Jaguar Rice everything. There you go, everything, yeah. to be. So with that being said, uh, Angelo, um, because we have an interest where Jaguar Rice has made this blue couch famous, um, before we even get to your backstory, um, people are going to want to know, 
how did you and Jaguar Wright even meet? How did that become a thing? A house of blues, just having fun, watching Ludacris Meek Mills perform, and just inviting her back to the tattoo parlor to get a tattoo. And I was 12 years ago. Press pause. So now all of those individuals who want to know why she's been untouched, except by the police, and why she has been able to move so freely with everything that she's been saying on the enter of the neck because she had Tony Soprano's uncle guarding her. Yeah. This is why people tell you that you have to be careful who you mess with because you don't know who they know and you don't know who's protecting them and who they know. Everybody knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. He said he grew up in the Italian market, mafia, mob ties, organized crime. Listen, one of my favorite genres is mafia. Casino, Carlito's Way, The Godfather, Donnie Brasco, Scarface, He. Guy told me one time, don't let yourself get attached to anything. You are not willing to walk out on in 30 seconds flat if you feel the heat around a corner. Now that's my all-time favorite, but he said he's been her friend for over 12 years. Can you imagine what she has seen in that amount of time? Because I know you don't think this is her manager, her friend, her protector, amongst other things, according to him, and she hasn't been just as privy to what he was involved in as he was her. I know we don't think that, right? So can you imagine the things that she's seen on top of just the industry, but with this being her protector? Watch this. Off camera, we were talking about, if you could take away one of your senses, what would it be? And I said, smell, and you said sight, and you said, because you've seen too much. Yeah, unfortunately, when you get older to the way I am, and you got 50 years on the street, and you've been involved in a lifetime of crime, I have seen way too much to where I only believe what I see because People always talk, and it, it happens for no reason. People get locked up, and because they get out on bail in 18 hours, right away, oh, he must have ratted on somebody. No, they just not, they're not looking for anything else. You could get locked up, and they're just, you're going through the process. You didn't rat to get out, you had to post bail. But people always talk, that's why like when you go away to prison, you have what's called the green sheet. Yeah. And you carry that with you at all times because that's the only thing that they believe. You can't just say, oh, Johnny's a rat, Billy's a rat. Well, who's in jail for them? Let me see his green sheet. Does it say confidential informant on it? If it says CI, then you know you have an informant. If it's just a guy talking, it's just a guy talking. But, you know, that's the way the thing, like I said, I wish I hadn't seen what I seen because it's not all good, but I can't make pretend I didn't see it. That's why I said that to you yesterday. Can you imagine being involved in so much that the one sense you would get rid of is your sight? The ability to see. The ability to see what's going on around you, what's moving towards you, what's moving under you, what's behind you. Your ability to see because you've seen too much. And you're afraid to see more? Or at least don't want to see more? Because if the movies are true, right, can you imagine? It takes a cold-hearted mother fricker to do some of the stuff I've watched in movies. Cold-hearted with no empathy and they could do it without question. Ask questions later because right now it's about action not asking and somehow he found an affinity for Jag and became her protector. Someone who has seen people disappeared and you're still asking why no one has touched her? This is why. People are going to want to know how did you and Jaguar Wright even meet? How did that become a thing? A house of Blues, just having fun, watching Ludacris Meek Mills perform, and just inviting her back to the tattoo parlor to get a tattoo, and that was 12 years ago. Is that the famous tattoo that everyone keeps talking about? Yeah. Okay, 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 just making sure. <laughs> so what, what, what did you see in Jag as far as just, you know, just your first introduction of her spirit? She was real, and in Atlantic City, just like Vegas, a lot of people are phony, but in talking with Jaguar and naturally having a little Hennessy and Coke too, 
made things easier. But there was no there was no line in there. Like you ask her a question, you're going to get the answer. You may not like the answer, but you're going to get the answer. And she's real. For me, being Italian and from Philadelphia, loyalty is rewarded. He said loyalty is rewarded. And this is one thing that we lack today, loyalty. Uh -huh. Everybody says they're loyal until it's time to do what loyalty does. And most people have a twisted sense of what loyalty is. We do. We think loyalty is standing behind you in your BS. Uh -huh. We think loyalty is kissing arse to be underneath you. That's why Natalie Nunn can't keep friends because she wants ass kisses. To her, those girls are nothing but a bunch of jesters. They're peasants there to entertain the queen. It's her way or itch the door, the plank. You're fired. We think loyalty is following behind someone like we're waiting on them to throw out Scooby snacks. No, loyalty is also loving you enough to protect you from yourself. But see, that doesn't get views. That doesn't get subscribers. That doesn't get followers. So I'm going to keep my tongue up your ass crack with hopes that you can bring me along with you. Not realizing those same people will drop you like a bad habit when you stop licking. That's the problem. What you do to get it, you've got to do to keep it or you'll lose it. But here's my question, right? I wonder if she had to do anything to earn that loyalty. That's the question. They say nothing in this world is free, right? So I wonder if there was a freedom she had to give up to earn this level of trust. Because you gotta know, if she has his loyalty, she has the loyalty of everything connected to him. And if you don't believe that, check out this. That's why I took this job. It's not one that I would particularly like, but if it keeps my friend alive and I have to take a bullet, then I'll take the bullet. But that comes with the job. So you would say you have a kind of like mob background? I have affiliations all over the country. I mean, we're all, you know, we're all people that have contacts like you guys got contacts. I do too, you know, you don't make, 60 years old without having contacts and especially all over the country i mean it's just something that you have to have you know to make it anywhere you need other people you need to work with good people like yourselves me because as long as you keep it real and you use them contacts you'll get places you know what i mean Listen, the Mafia sends bullets. <laughs> so to hear him say that he would take a bullet and take one for a black girl is crazy work. Half of you ninjas around here wouldn't take a bullet for your friend. Take a bullet for your girlfriend. For two, the reason this is important to me is because it shows how much he considers her a friend. But for one, because historically Italians didn't care too much for blacks. You know, mooly, mooligans, eggplant. Y'all didn't know that? While we were binging Scarface and The Godfather, all three movies in the trilogy, in love with all things mafia, they thought we were animals. Sometimes I'm inclined to agree, but that's for a different video. But they didn't care for us, and they for damn sure were forbidden from dating us. And I hear you, those were Sicilians, not Italians. Well, dumb, dumb, Diddy, you think there was a difference in the way they thought about you? Child, check this out. Now, you come up in the 80s, right? Right. For an Italian to date a black woman, was that frowned upon or was it like? Very frowned upon. And Very. for me, very sad because there was a lot of beautiful African-American women, as there was a lot of beautiful Spanish women too. I mean, all women are beautiful, it's just, it wasn't allowed. Like, you know, there was no way for me to bring a, an African-American woman to my mother's house. Yeah, they seemed like it was always a thing to take one home to your mother. It's like, bring you, a, bring you an Italian home. Yeah. Not bring someone outside of uh, the Italian race home. And, uh, there's a pride in that, I would assume. Yeah, it's it's reserved for only the best intentions. Like, you wouldn't bring a girl home to meet your mother if you were going to have her for a one-night stand. But once you bring her home to meet your mother, you're letting your family know that, hey, I care about this girl. You know, I want her to see my family. And things, like, work out, you know, in a good way. But well, I'm glad that 
society has changed and that there is no more prejudice like that because we were talking about you know, Lake Charles, Louisiana. When I was here in 1994, they still had a white beach and a black beach. Right. right. And that was totally insane in 1994. Because I actually thought the name of the beach was Black Beach. Right. And then my, my friend turned around and said, no, that's where the black people on the beach, the white people got to stay here. That's crazy. And that's 1994. It's 30 years ago. Lake Charles, Louisiana. Oh, that's crazy. It's right on the Houston border. Beaumont, Texas. Secrets spill. So there's a reason why I like watching mafia movies so much, right? Because outside of all of the violence, they were all about the family. You never go against the family. I talked to Bazzini. I can make a deal with him and still keep my hotel. Is that why you slapped my brother around in public? Oh, no, that, that, that was nothing, Mike. Now, no, uh, Mo did me nothing by that. Sure, he flies off the handle once in a while, but, but Mo and me were good friends, right, Mo, huh? I got a business to run. I got to kick asses sometimes to make it run right. We had a little argument, Freddie and I, so I had to straighten him out. You straightened my brother out? He was banging cocktail waitresses two at a time. Players couldn't get a drink at the table. What's wrong with you? I leave for New York tomorrow. Think about a price. Do you know who I am? I'm Mo Green. I made my bones when you were going out with cheerleaders. Wait a minute, Mo. Mo, I get an idea. Tom, Tom, you're the conciliary. Now you can talk to the Don, you can explain. Just a minute. Don is semi-retired and Mike is in charge of the family business now. Have anything to say, say it to Mike. You don't come to Las Vegas and talk to a man like Mo Green like that! Fredo, you're my older brother, and I love you. But don't ever take sides with anyone against the family again. Ever. And you never tell anyone outside of the family what you are thinking. Santino, come here. What's the matter with you? I think your brain is going soft. And all that comedy you're playing with that young girl. Never tell anybody outside the family what you're thinking again. But the problem is, some of our families, and I'm talking to us now, dear black people, some of our families are as weak as a bladder filled with lukewarm water, just leaks and spills everywhere. Mamas against daughters, daughters against mamas, parents unaliving children, children unaliving parents. The disrespect is breathtaking. I remember a time when children wanted to make it to take care of their parents and to give back to them what was given. Not now. It's every man for themselves. These kids will leave their parents starving after they risked and gave up everything for them for a taste of the spotlight. It used to be what happens in this house stays in this house, but we twisted it and perverted it and turned it into a free for all to do whatever we wanted to indoors. And our children came out abused, rejected, and afraid to speak because what happens in the house stays in the house. That statement was supposed to mean family business, not family damn abuse. But see, that goes back to that twisted sense of loyalty that I spoke about. I can do unto you, but you better not tell nobody what was done unto you. Or, now we have the Spill Society, uh -huh, who spills everything on Beyonce's Enter of the Net and China's World Wide Web. They don't even talk to the family member first, just everything that happens you run to the web so you can build this fake following to uplift you in your bull-ish so you can feel justified in your wrongdoing. We're so twisted. Families turn on each other quicker than milk sitting out in the open sun. Y'all turn on each other quicker than the flip of a light switch, the snap of your fingers, the blink of an eye. One minute your family, the next you're an enemy. When I would watch mafia movies, I would watch how they took care of their own. They were the judge, the jury, and the executioner. They handled the disputes. They fed their people because it was all about the family. If there was a dispute, they brought the parties together to discuss it. And they made a decision that everyone stuck by. Or else, sleeping with the fishes. Kaput. 
finito gone there wasn't gonna be a shootout i wish you would in front of the godfather the don that's mediating your situation but see we can't get there we won't get there because everyone is vying for power there it is everyone wants to be on top and then when they get there they look back and turn their nose down at the ones who weren't willing to sacrifice their morals to get there roly krishan now everybody broke and jealous and mad and haters what goes up y'all know the rest and all you can do is pray that when they come down they don't crash and burn i'm not saying italians are perfect no culture is but we can all learn something from each other we all have practices that if we would just let go of the bullshit and sit down and talk to each other and learn who each other are we would all be better for it but that would mean letting go of the past and figuring out how to move to a future and nobody wants to do that really be a family look out for each other be each other's protectors and vindicators because he said if you hurt her you better kill me so basically if you don't you tell him i'm coming and hell's coming with me you hear hell's coming with me so you want to know why everyone's so hush hush when jag speaks who's going to touch her when she's backed by the italian mafia she's backed by an entire family that's something some of us know nothing about michael corleone had all of his enemies erased while he was at a christening that's not a loyalty that can be bought that's a loyalty that is earned it's built it's forged and many times the only way to break it is death and before anyone gets to my comments talking about that was just a movie dumb dumb diddy all movies are based on real life idiots so the question is, is this a blood in, blood out relationship? Who knows? Only time will tell. Is Jag telling the truth? Well, no one has come forward to refute her claim. And before you say, well, that's because she has no money and they won't get nothing from it. Neither do half of the bloggers they are suing, yet they still pursue that. Hell, all of them came out after Cat Williams spoke, but they're as gagged as a hoe on her knees over Jag. Please. Now, if you want to listen to the full interview, because this is just a few clips, then you can go over to the Real Life Street Stars YouTube page. The video is now members only, so you will have to subscribe and become a member if you want to see the full video. But you can go over there if you want to check it out. Drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this story what you think about jaguar right and her soprano angelo <laughs> her protector her confidant her everything who's backing her and will take a bullet for her let me know what you think about this story in the comments like and subscribe consider becoming a confidant thank you for tuning in to sip savor and spill until next time keep it bubbly ta-ta